In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Shine into our hearts the light of your wisdom, O God, and open our minds to the knowledge of your word, that in all things we may think and act according to your good will, and may live continually in the light of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading from the first book of Samuel. Samuel was ministering before the Lord, a boy wearing a linen ephod. His mother used to make for him a little robe and take it to him each year when she went up with her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice. Then Eli would bless Ekiah and his wife and say, May Lord repay you with children by this woman for the gift that she made to the Lord. 
and then they would return to their home. Now the boy Samuel continued to grow in both stature and in favor with the Lord and with the people. The word of the Lord. The second reading is from the book of Galatians. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you. So you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell within you richly. Teach and abomish one another in all wisdom and with gratitude in your hearts. Sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to our Lord. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Now every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up as usual for the festival. When the festival was ended and they started to return, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem but his parents did not know it. 
Assuming that he was in the group of travelers, they went to Jay's journey. Then they started to look for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem to search for him. And after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. All who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Child, why have you treated us like this? Look, your father and I have been searching for you in great anxiety. And he said to them, Why were you searching for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. His mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in years and in divine and human favor. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Today, we hear a text that we don't often hear in worship a scripture text concerning Jesus after his birth as a slightly older child. There are many unusual stories written about the boy Jesus in non-canonical texts that were not included in the canon of scripture that we read and study. As a child, I remember seeing a picture of this gospel reading in one of my Sunday school classrooms. It appears Jesus was still a child who had not yet gone through the rite of passage to adulthood that we know as a bar mitzvah for a young male. Despite this fact, Jesus already seems to have attained much understanding. This was the reason the teachers with whom he conversed were amazed by what he knew. Jesus is so engrossed in conversation in the temple with the teachers that he never noticed he was separated from his parents or any of those with whom he traveled from Nazareth to Jerusalem. It would seem that even at such a young age, Jesus has already developed priorities, the priorities that he would call others to later on who would follow him. Even at this point in his life, Jesus is making his father, his heavenly father, and his father's word his first and greatest priority, even apparently before family, friends, or acquaintances. Remember now, Jesus is without sin, so he is not being disobedient or disrespectful to his parents. He is about his father's business in his father's house. And I think it's fascinating that Jesus is actually surprised that his parents were looking for him at all. And he cannot understand why they didn't expect him to be in the temple. This is where Jesus believed he needed to be. 
And this is true, but not because he has no desire to be with his parents. It is that his father's will and his father's word will always be his first priority. As I meditated and reflected on this text, my question was, did Mary forget who her son is? It's a lot for anyone to take in and get their head around, isn't it? My son is the son of God. And even if Jesus is the son of God as well as her son, which he was and is, she's greatly concerned when she does not know where he is. And with great anxiety, I'm sure, they went in search of him. And when they finally found him, of course Mary would say, why have you treated us like this? Jesus did not stay in the temple to speak to the teachers, to worry his parents, to disregard them, or to be insensitive toward them. He was there because Jesus is God with us, God's presence among us, up close and personal. This scene is a foretaste of what is to come for Jesus and his family. And so whether they believe in him or not, that will not deter him from the mission that his father has called him to, and that is to gather believers so that they too may become children of God. As John reminds us, who are born not of blood or the will of the flesh or the will of man, but of God. In Jesus, God is with us and he is the savior of all people. And all of us who believe in Jesus and are baptized into his death and resurrection know we have received the precious gift of new life and relationship with God through the gift of faith, by the gift of the Holy Spirit to each and all. Jesus comes to us and is for us by his own faithfulness, his life-giving, and his resurrection makes us who belong to him a new creation. And it is interesting in the reading from Colossians, we are called God's chosen ones, not because we're different than others, but we are those who have been united with Christ in baptism and are called to be his body in the world and to witness to him as Jesus witnesses to God and reveals God to us and that God is with us and for us in him. For us who belong to the body of Christ, we, like Jesus, put our Heavenly Father first, listening to his word, seeking to do his will. And the writer of Colossians has some definite thoughts about what our life together as Christ's body looks like. And since we wear Christ's righteousness because we are baptized and made so by him, we are also clothed with Christ's love. And as Colossians reminds us, with kindness to humility, meekness, and patience. And it certainly seems as the pandemic grinds on, these gracious qualities, along with love, which Christ also calls us to put on, can change the course of our lives and of those into whom we come in contact. For those who do not know Jesus will never expect such behavior from human beings. 
This witness is important. And it's part of our witness to our Lord, not just for this season, Christmas and COVID, but for every season of our life. Kindness, humility, meekness, compassion, patience, never go out of style, and there is never an inappropriate season for them. The reason that you and I are even here is that because someone in our life, most likely our parents, and in some cases our friends, brought us to the Lord Jesus, and we were baptized, and we have put on Christ, and we are part of his body, the church. And so here we are, for Jesus' sake, God's other children. And that means we are part of the life and kingdom of God by God's gift of grace and because of the love of our Savior, Jesus the Christ. And so we live now in this kingdom and the world. And this is a blessing that we carry, that we share with all people around us. A blessing that comes through Jesus, the Son, our Savior, and the Holy Spirit. And one more time, I want to, I want to share with you how Luther describes this kingdom's coming and this gift. He wrote, the blessing which the Father planned, the Son holds in his infant hand, that in his kingdom bright and fair, you may with us his glory share, now and always. Amen.
with a heavenly host and Christians throughout time and space. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. You come to us in gatherings of your church across the globe. Unite us with those who celebrate your birth, even when they are weighed down by grief, loss, poverty, hunger, or injustice. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You come to us in the diverse splendor of the universe. Grant us the humility to trust our place in the network of creation, that we live in service to you and the natural, natural world. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You come to us through relationships of many kinds, families, friendships, communities, and nations. Guide us in these relationships that we recognize the Christ child in one another and show your love to those most vulnerable. Merciful God, you come to us through people whom the world forgets. Poor shepherds and an imprisoned Paul announced your good news. Send your spirit to all who are imprisoned, struggling with addiction, unwell or in any need this day. And we remember especially those in need of healing and strength and those in need of comfort. We remember the family of John Steiner, the victims of recent tornadoes, John Krauss, Joe Short, Carolyn Casey, Phil Hartenstein, Harlan Redke, Clara Kissinger, Teresa Brooks, Julie Sellard, the family of Kathleen Redke, the family of Gerlinda Yeeter, the family of Linda Weber, the family of Sam Minder, Jr., the family of Darren Harkins. Merciful God, you come to us in acts of justice and forgiveness. Open our hearts to forgive one another without permitting injustice. Supply us with the wisdom to be clothed with love, binding all things together in perfect harmony. Merciful God, you come to us through those who have died yet live with you forever. We give thanks for Stephen, deacon and martyr, who gave his life to tell the story of your love. Merciful God, rejoicing in your word made flesh among us, we commend these prayers to you, confident of your grace and love made known to us in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. 
Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us pray. Good and loving God, we rejoice in the birth of Jesus, who came among the poor to bring the riches of your grace. As you have blessed us with your gifts, let them be blessings for others. With the trees of the field, with all the earth and heaven, we shout for joy at the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord.
creator of all and source of life. At the birth of time, your word brought light into the world. In the fullness of time, you sent your word, born of Mary, to shine in our darkness and to make us your daughters and sons. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his birth and life among us, his death and resurrection, we await his coming again when all things will be restored in him. By your Spirit, bless us and this bread and cup, that held and nourished by you, we may live as your children, shining with the light of your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come to Christ's banquet. Feast on God's grace. <laughs>
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you through eternal life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Radiant God, with our eyes, we have seen your salvation, and in this meal, we have feasted on your grace. May your word take flesh in us, that we may be your holy people, revealing your glory made known to us in Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. <laughs>